Welcome to waterfrontgurus.com Today I'm going to be showing you guys what is it to be living waterfront in one of the, uh, the richest neighborhoods of Fort Lauderdale Las Olas I'm going to introduce you the neighborhood from the water I'll be paddling around uh, the main aisles and uh, I'll be showing you guys the houses and uh, the boats and how the rich uh, of Fort Lauderdale live so leave your like and come with us so in Fort Lauderdale river cruises water taxis and gondolas take people out on tours to learn both the history and geographical past of the new river and canals that run through neighborhoods with mansions by the water these canals are all man-made aside from the new river itself in 1925, a real estate boom was in progress in South Florida, and Fort Lauderdale had only 5,000 people. While the land rush was focused on the May, on the Miami area, communities throughout the region, including Fort Lauderdale, Pompano Beach, and Boca Raton, were swept up in the speculative buying frenzy. Construction of the first canals in Fort Lauderdale began in 1920 by clearing the mangroves and creating the first finger islands that became the trademark of Fort Lauderdale. These canals made Fort Lauderdale be known as the Venice of America, with some 300 miles of inland waterways lined with 42,000 resident boats and served by 100 marinas and boat yards, and boat docks. A little history on the New River. The city of Fort Lauderdale is named for a for a second Seminole War fortification built on the banks of the New River in 1838. Major William Lauderdale led an army along the east coast of Florida to capture Seminole agricultural lands and battle the elusive Indian warriors. Altogether, three forts named after Fort Lauderdale, after Major Lauderdale, would be constructed. The first at the fork of the New River, the second at Tarpon Bend, a neighborhood here in Fort Lauderdale, and the largest on the beach at the site where Bahia Mar is today. And you may ask, are there any forts in Fort Lauderdale? No, all these forts were burnt down and none of these forts survive today. The world famous Las Olas. The most famous area of Fort Lauderdale because of the canals and waterfront houses is Las Olas. The Las Olas Isles are on the easternmost section of Las Olas Boulevard and are interlaced with canals and waterfront homes that will catch anyone's eyes. Las Olas Boulevard was constructed in 1917 when Las Olas was just a dirt road that crossed swampy wetlands to the barrier island on the beach. The Las Olas Isles were dredged in the 1920s to create land for the area's most picturesque waterfront residential district. The engineering began on developer Charles G. Rhodes studied the parallel canal system of Venice, Italy, and used the technique called finger islanding to create the most sought-after pieces of real estate in the country. Another name was W. F. Morang, which arrived in Fort Lauderdale from Boston in the early 1920s and participated with other developers in the land boom era of 1923 to 1926. His company, W.F. Morang & Sons, helped develop and drag some of the finger islands around the city, including the 80 acres currently called the Seven Isles. You can see Seven Isles from Las Olas Boulevard and from the intercoastal north of Las Olas. With these 80 acres, his first projects included Rio Vista Isles, where he dredged canals and built roads and bridges before dredging the area north of Las Olas Boulevard then called Lauderdale Isles and Lauderdale Shores. Today, these waterfront homes in Las Olas are available starting at a medium and above. These waterfront homes are desirable for boaters due to deep water and ocean access without fixed bridges. The close proximity to the beach, Las Olas and restaurants uh, is another driving force to the popularity of this area. The Las Olas Isles in Fort Lauderdale include uh, Coral Isles, Idlewild, Isle of Venice, and a few other isles that are famous to people that drive you know, from Fort Lauderdale downtown to the beach. Um, 
Idlewild, for example, is a gated waterfront community just south of Las Olas and west of the intercoastal waterway. It is one of the most sought after prestigious communities because its proximity to the beach, shopping and restaurants, and the short distance by boat to the ocean. Idlewild sits directly across from the Bahia Mar Marina, a home of the world famous for Lauderdale Boat Show. Prices range from 60, uh, 600,000 to well over 6 million. For a bit more affordable waterfront homes, if we're looking to buy them for another day, you can look up Citrus Isles, Tarpon River, Riverside Park, Shady Banks, all located on the Davie Boulevard area and further away from Las Olas and the beach, but still with easy access to I-95. The term Millionaire's Row was originally a pseudonym of the Las Olas Isle neighborhood, where several waterfront houses in a row were owned by millionaires. This term is very used by the river cruisers that take tourists on the new river every day. A few of the famous people that inhabited or are still living for Lauderdale are Johnny Weissmuller, actor who played Tarzan and invented the signature yell. This. Wayne Heizenga, CEO of Waste Management, Blockbuster Video, and Auto Nation. Scotty Pippen is known to have a house on the water, and Roger Stone was recently arrested in a house in Las Olas. Johnny Weissmuller, the original Tarzan, is known to have lived on Las Olas. The movie Where the Boys Are helped to secure for Lauderdale's reputation as a spring break destination, and there is a house on the river where the movie scenes takes place. We can't forget to mention the famous Elbow Room on the beach that hosted several tourists drunken nights while in town. By the way, the full Where the Boys Are movie is available on YouTube. But Las Olas and Fort Lauderdale wasn't always glory. In 1939, the Great Depression had come to Fort Lauderdale earlier than to the rest of the country. In 1926, for Lauderdale was wiped out by a vicious hurricane. It was estimated there, was a, there wasn't a single building that had escaped without some sort of damage. Trees were down all along Las Olas Boulevard, homes had been destroyed, newer residents, those who had created the demand for new homes, left the area. They had mortgages on homes that no longer existed. There was no electricity and there were a lot of bugs. Uh, these outsiders had finally seen the not-so-paradise out of Florida, and that is a topic for another time. Thanks for watching. Uh, leave your like if you like these videos. Uh, Waterfront Gurus now is also on YouTube, so make sure to follow us, and uh, I'll see you guys next time. Under the bridge. Here we go. Oof. I think I've I've done so far at least six miles. Let's see how it goes from here. See you guys in a little bit.